are thousands of databases located throughout the world, many of which are full of interesting information. However, even the most intriguing of datasets may never get noticed if it's not visualised in an exciting way. Take the Survey of Scottish Witchcraft, for example. This database was created by academics at the University of Edinburgh in the early 2000s. This database contains a wealth of information about accused witches throughout Scotland at a time when witchcraft was illegal between the 1500s and the 1800s. These people were innocent people that were accused of witchcraft. They were even taken to trial, detained or even executed for being accused of witchcraft. We know now that these people were innocent and that this was a great miscarriage of justice. This database contains a wealth of this information related to an accused witch's place of residence, their occupation, their class status, even the type of torture that they endured. This amazing dataset has sat in the shadows for years, being primarily used by academics rather than viewed by the general public. Why is that the case? Well, if you look here at the page behind me, you'll start to get an idea. This website is dated and it's not been updated in years, making it not visually interesting for the average person to look about. So my job was to take this amazing data set and bring it to life. How did I do that? Through using linked open data. Now, you're probably wondering what's linked open data? And that's a question that I asked myself before starting the project. Linked data is the connection of different pieces of data together to create a web of data that's machine readable. And when it's open source, it means that this data can be accessed by anyone and sometimes edited by anyone too. So I used a program called Wikidata to work on visualizing this data set. Wikidata is a sister organization of Wikipedia and the two of them are very similar. With Wikipedia, you work on taking different pieces of text and referencing them on a specific topic. And with Wikidata, you take different pieces of data with references and connect them together to learn about different topics too. So over the course of a three month internship at the University of Edinburgh, I worked on using the program of Wikidata to try and visualize the places of residents that were mentioned within the survey of Scottish Witchcraft database. I worked on this project along with the Wikimedian in Residence, Ewan McAndrew, and I tried to visualise the different places that were mentioned within the dataset. Not only were there places of residence, but there was also a range of other geographical places, from their place of residence, their place of detainment, their place of confession, even their place of trial. All of this information was there but no one has tried to put it on a map before. So that's what I wanted to do during this internship. In theory, it would be simple. I would find the place where they lived, plot it on a map, and there you would get your final map. But in reality, it wasn't that simple. <coughs> Places in Scotland have changed a lot since the 18th century, and many of the place names that were mentioned within the database no longer exist today. So a big part of the project was trying to work on actually finding these places in Scotland using historical sources and plotting them on a map. To start with, I worked on trying to find the places that are around in modern Scotland today. Towns, cities, villages that haven't changed. So out of the database, there were 3,100 accused witches that were linked to a place of residence. And for these places, there were 822 different places. So I tried to use this list and find these places and see what places were around today. What I would do is try and look on Wikidata and see what places already had a page on the website. And from that, there were around 300 different places. So what I would do with the location, um, I would check to see whether it had coordinate points. If it had coordinate points, then there was a direct place in Scotland that we could put that place on the map and then connect it to the accused witch. So I would take the place of residence, connect it to the accused witch using the property place of residence. And this would then create a direct link between these two pieces of data and begin to tell stories with the data. 
So that left around 500 places still to find. So I really had my work cut out over the three months to find these places. What I would do is use a range of different data sets to find it. So I spoke to different historical academics and geographers to see what they would recommend. And I looked at different maps, place name books, gazetteers of Scotland and websites to try and find them. I looked on the National Library of Scotland and there there is a range of maps that are digitised. The main map that I used for being able to find the places was the Ordnance Survey 1890 map. This is quite a lot later than the data set was originally produced for these accused witches, as the accused witches would have been far earlier than that. But places in Scotland hadn't changed that much in this short period. So I was able to use these maps as my primary source, along with a range of the other data sets too. I didn't just have the place name. I had the parish, the presbytery and the county as additional clues to find the place. But it was a lot of investigation work and problem solving to find these places. But when I eventually found a place, what I would do is take the coordinate points for this place and make a new wiki data page for the location with the coordinate points and then link it to the accused witch as their place of residence. And then these accused witches could then be plotted on the map at these specific locations. Out of the 822 places, I was able to find all but 25 of the places. So it was a very good outcome for the project for being able to find these places using the historical sources. Once I'd been able to locate these places, I started on working with other pieces of the data set and trying to visualise different areas. So places of their trial, detainment, their death, along with other pieces of data such as their occupation, their class status, all of these things I could start to link together on Wikidata so that when I pulled the data through I would have more information there to build a story about each one of the accused witches. The other pieces of geographical information were easier to locate because they tend to be happening in larger towns and cities so that part of the project was a bit easier. But once I started uploading the information onto Wikidata, I was able to start to see some new insights into the data. For example, behind me, what you can see is the connection of places of residence to their place of death for the accused witches. So you can start to see some of the travel in Scotland during that time and where people would go for trial and execution. And along with this, there were a lot of other trends in the data that were able to be found by working on the visualisations. Behind me is the finished website and it was really fun to be able to work on the different visualisations. What I wanted to do was to try and think of a way to make this map interesting for the public and be able to want to be engaged with it. So with, along with software developers and graphic designers we were able to make this website. Using Wikidata, I was able to pull the data from this program and put it into this map using a query service with some simple lines of code. And with that, I was able to create this website. What the website can do is as you zoom in on the map, you can start to learn about the different accused witches in the area and click on them. And there's direct links within the website to take you onto the Survey of Scottish Witchcraft database the kind of website that we started with. And by doing that, people would then be able to learn about the stories behind the names and the places for each one of these accused witches. And as an outcome of making this website, it's had over 300,000 views. And people in Scotland have been wanting to learn about their local history and become aware of what's the local witches around them. Pieces of history that people weren't aware of before, is suddenly there in this map that they can learn about. And not only that, but there's been over 180 countries that have viewed this website around the world too. So it's not just local history in Scotland, but other people are interested and want to become aware of what happened in Scotland during this time. So as a result of the website, it's really brought people's attention to accuse witches in Scotland and to this miscarriage of justice. So it's been really useful at turning people's attention to this area of history in Scotland.
And partly due to the website, it's helped bring back this idea of trying to pardon the accused witches in Scotland. And a really big outcome from that has been lately, um, Nicola Sturgeon on International Women's Day issued a formal apology for the Witchcraft Act that happened when witchcraft was illegal in Scotland. Not only has the website been good at helping turn people's attention to witchcraft in Scotland, but the ideas that I've used within bringing this data set to life has also been used in other projects around the world. What I would do is write a weekly blog post about the processes that I followed um, to try and come up with a technique that people could use to also make similar websites. And since then, there has been an array of different websites that have been produced or in production. And this is an example here of a map of the Scottish Reformation, which is another amazing data set that's been brought to life using this technique. So what I would say is if you've got a data set and it's sitting there static, you need to do something with it and try and bring it to life. And linked open data can be a good way to do that.